Hello there, Carrie Rhodes here. Welcome back to my YouTube channel. This is episode four of my Let's Go Nuts Stamp Set of the Month series for the month of October. And in this episode, it's all Christmas. I am taking the cards that I made in the first three episodes and using them as inspiration for my cards that I'm making today, all Christmas cards. So it's gonna be tons of fun, I'm very excited. Next, I want to announce the winner of last week's card. So if you commented on last week's video, episode three, your name was put into a drawing. I randomly selected a winner and that name will appear across the screen right now. You are the winner of last week's birthday card shaker, this card right here. Congratulations, I will be in touch to get your address and get those shipped out at the end of the month. So for today's giveaway, I'm actually gonna use these cards in my real life and send them out. So what I wanna do is give away a mystery pack of Lawn Fawn cards that I have created to the winner in today's video. So to be entered, just leave a comment below. Let me know which card is your favorite from today's creations, and I will randomly select a winner that will be announced next week. Okay, so. I think that's all the business. We should go ahead and just get stamping. So here are the three cards I've made in the series so far. These cards are the ones that inspired me to create the cards I'm making today. So in a sense, I'm casing myself. And this is what I did. I take my little notebook here and I just kind of sketch out my ideas and that's how I got started with today's cards. Now let's take a look at the products I'm using. We have the Let's Go Nuts stamp set. Car Critters Christmas, Christmas Dreams, Yeti or Not, Winter Scripty Sentiments, Big Acorn, and the Large Slimline Die with Sliders, the Slimline Stitched Wavy Borders, the New Slimline Forest Border, Simple Stitched Hillside, Build a House Christmas, Acorn House, Mushroom House, the pull tab and the um, camera add-on for that. Here are all the images I've stamped to use on my card. I stamped this three times, once for each of the cards I'm using. I'm doing very simple, simple Copic coloring for these um, with my W0, W2, and W4 markers. And I did the, all the squirrels the same for all the cards. And then I'm doing the acorns all the same, E25 and E27 for the dark top piece of the acorn, E13 and E11 for the bottom of the acorn. And then for all the red, I'm using R20, R27, and R17 for all the red on this, this whole video. And then I'll just blend those out with that lightest color, and I really like that look, but I think I could get a little bit darker on my lightest color, so I might need to order a new Copic marker. Now here um, is my tree, I'm showing you all the greens that I used. Actually, they might be a little bit off screen. My darkest is Y17, mid-tone is Y13, and my lightest, um, I'm sorry, they're all YG, YG11 for my lightest. So there you can see all the different colors that I've used. I added a little bit of that R20 to the cheeks of the squirrels so they have nice little rosy cheeks because it's winter, they're outside, they're cold. And then I did use my Jelly Roll pen as I always do. You know I love it to add highlights to all the things. And then I'll go ahead and die cut out all of these things and here you can see them all ready to go. So cute. Now I won't use all of these images on every card, but they're the ones I wanted to. So here's card number one, it's a Z fold card. So to make this card, I need a base that is eight and three fourths by three and three, three fourths. And then my Z fold panel is nine and a fourth by three and three fourths. I scored it at four and three eighths and eight and three fourths. I have ink blended on all of these panels and stamped some snowflakes, and then I'm splattering them with liquid stardust. I will actually show you this because I use this technique on all three cards. I just realized that I hadn't pushed start or record on my camera. So I missed a little part, but I will show it to you on the other two cards, so don't worry. All right, so I'm adding those hills that I die cut with my large slimline hills to the new forest 
border and they line up perfectly. I love that. So I'm adding in these little trees which were not on the original card. And remember, I'm just being inspired by the cards I made before. They're not going to be exact. It's not like this was the Halloween scene and now this is the winter scene, although you could do that. I did make a few little changes. But you see here, I accidentally cut the strips for my hills at eight and a half. So I'm gonna fix that in a minute. But I'm here, I'm cutting apart this hill that is on the Z fold. Now I didn't do this on the original card, but this is now two layers of cardstock thick with those trees behind it. So it was gonna be really bulky. So it was better to cut it and have a little bit of an opening there. And then what I did to fix the problem is I cut both the, the, the biggest panel, I cut it down to eight and a half inches. And then for my Z fold pattern, or my Z fold panel, I rescored it. Um, so it actually has two scored lines, um, but it'll be covered up that first scored line. So it's now scored at eight and a half instead of eight and three fourths. And that just saved my cutting mistake and I didn't have to redo all of that because I'd already ink blended and splattered and oh, die cut. So yeah, I'm adding some double stick tape here on that flap that's on the end of the Z fold panel and some liquid glue. And then I'll attach the two pieces together at that scored line. And then I have my Z fold panel just like that. All right, here are all the things that I die cut to make my acorn and mushroom house. And I've put them all together and then I can add them to this Z fold card just as I did on the Halloween scene, but now they are Christmas. So I have two acorn houses and one mushroom house. And then I have one extra square. I'm gonna build a little scene where the squirrels can come together for a Christmas party. It's so cute. So this tree is from that Christmas Dreams stamp set. And then I have the squirrel bringing a wagon full of presents to the tree. And then I have my sleeping squirrel. Um, this little squirrel I'm adding the scarf to that does come in the Let's Go Nuts stamp set. So I love that. I added the pile of acorns and the tiniest squirrel to sit on top of that. I added a lamp post with a lantern on it from the Mushroom House die set. I've added a stocking and presents, an acorn, more squirrels, and then we can stick this entire piece down to the card base. Now, some of the things you couldn't really see because it's so long, you couldn't see the end of the card, so I'll make sure enough pictures to show you all of that. But here is the Merry Christmas sentiment that I added to this card. I believe it's from the um, winter scripty messages, sentiments. There we go. I added the big acorn to the inside and then a little bow on that. I'm adding some glitter pen to all kinds of things on this card, especially the Christmas lights that I added to each of the acorn houses. That is from the um, build a house Christmas add on and it's really thin. So I was able to just bend it ever so slightly to fit the curve of the acorn and the mushroom. And that finishes up that card. So now on to card number two, this is gonna be the pull tab card. Now there's a lot of the pull tab mechanism part I don't exactly show, but you can rewatch episode two if you wanna see how exactly I did it. Also, I did mess up a little bit doing this the second time when I'd already done it, which is odd or normal for me. <laughs> So I stamped all these acorns on a traced image of the acorn house and then I colored them exactly how I colored the acorns um, on my stamped and die cut images and then I'm just cutting around this leaving some space at the top so I can glue it to the back of my acorn. Now I did color this in red and green. You might have seen that on the screen. They look like strawberries. I wanted them to look like festive Christmas acorns, but they did not. So I tossed that and went to the traditional brown acorns. And I'm adding some presents to the inside of my acorn house, which by the way, on the white part, I trimmed the top off, which is necessary when making this a pull tab. And you can see here, I've already used my pull tab dies to cut away the pieces I need to make this mechanism work. And here I am using mermaid ink and a blending brush to add that dusting of color on the background, which is the part I missed on card number one. So you can see it here. I am making the edges darker and the center lighter and 
I'm because I'm making three very involved cards I stuck with the same color scheme throughout and that made it much easier also doing really light ink blending like this made it easier it didn't take quite as long now these three snowflakes are from the Yeti or not stamp set it's one of my favorite lawn fawn sets I use these snowflakes quite a bit when making Christmas cards so I'm stamping them with the same color ink right over the top of that ink blended background until I have all the snowflakes that I want and then splattering that with my liquid stardust and it looks very shimmery with that fine dusting I also did the same to my two hill pieces and we'll just let all of that dry and come back to that and put them together once they are ready to go so I glued on the tallest hill and then the shorter hill over the top of that and those are just with the simple stitched hillside I use those dies all the time now I'm adding some foam um, adhesive to the outer edges of the house and that is necessary to create a channel for my pull tab card now I stuck it to the top hill which is what I did on the original card but it did not work out I on the original card my um, acorns when I pulled them up out of the house they came way out so I tried to make this one shorter but I actually die cut my slip slit down too low so you'll see how this um, happens in just a moment but first I am trimming down that pull tab that my acorn is going to stick to because it shows behind it I didn't need it to be as big so I am trimming it down some more it was still showing and then I just pressed that down I put had put some double-sided adhesive on that tab and then pressed it down but now when I pull this out my acorns barely show so I needed to fix it. So what I need to do actually is remove my acorn house and my little stairs. It's very scary <laughs> to think I might be ruining my card at this point. I'm gonna move that acorn house down and it will now sit upon the lower hill. And thank goodness for the little stairs, otherwise my acorn house would have been floating in the air. Um, but the stairs actually ground it to that lower hill. And now I can pull my acorns all the way up, which is what I wanted. Um, I just didn't do very good, um, you know, measuring when I added that slot into the card. So that fixed it. Thank goodness. I had a little stray adhesive I removed there with my sanding eraser. And that will totally remedy this card. So now I'm going to trim off that excess tiny bit that I don't need for this pull tab. I already die cut this little arrow piece that I will attach to the top of that pulling mechanism so the recipient knows how to move this card. And then you want to use this stabilizer piece for sure. It helps your pull tab mechanism not move from side to side. It just stabilizes it. It's so cool that Lawn Fawn makes dies that are tools. I just love that. All right, so I'm adding my Christmas tree, my wagon of presents. I used a different um, set of packages for this one. Um, this one's from the Christmas Dreams. The uh, taller stack is from the Car Christmas add-on stamp set. So I just shortened the handle of my wagon so it would fit across this card by cutting off the wagon handle and then gluing it to the back. It just makes it look shorter. You can, can't even tell it's been cut. And then I added the acorns to the wagon and a bow to that as well. I'm adding more squirrels. That squirrel, he just has to be on top of the house. I added another squirrel with a little candy cane in his hand, the branch with the squirrel on here. Because I moved that house down, I needed something at the top. So I took the inspiration from card number three. I had this on last week's card. And so I added it to the pull tab on this, even though it wasn't on the original pull tab. So that's all done with a stamped sentiment. And then I added foam tape to the back all around that pull tab, but making sure not to touch it and added that to my card base, which is eight and three fourths by seven and a half and scored at three and three fourths. So I have a little bit of a border of my slimline card all the way around. I'm adding the big acorn, two squirrels and a bow. To the inside of the card i only use the big acorn on the insides of my card so all the cards have the big acorn on the inside and that finishes up card number two inspired by last week's fall pull tab 
or actually it was two weeks ago. Card number three is inspired by the birthday shaker card, but we're gonna make a Christmas shaker card. I'm not going to be making an acorn cake for this one, I'm just gonna use the house, but I am doing the background the exact same way with that mermaid ink, stamping out all those snowflakes. And when I stamp this, I ink it up and then I rotate it before I press it down every time. So I am making a more random looking snowy scene and making sure I re-ink it every time. And some liquid stardust. I did the same on the little hill. And this is a die cut window from um, the Trinity Stamps envelope die set. I love the scalloped frame, oh my word. And I did glue on the window sheet and then this piece is the fallout piece from the center and I die cut the top of that with the simple stitched borders and inlaid it on top of my window sheet. That was perfect. And then I added my house, which I did a craft color for the bottom of the acorn on this one, which I love how that turned out. And then I'm just gonna add my foam square or my foam strips to the back and making sure I have a nice reservoir there for my shaker elements and then some more foam to support the other pieces there. And then I'm adding my branch and a sleeping squirrel this time and another stocking with the tiny acorn because I thought that is so cute. And then the yay squirrel gets the scarf this time. A little bit of anti-static powder on the inside of my card so my shaker elements can roam freely. And then I'll remove all the backing on my tape and I'm gonna bring in some clay elements that are shaped like snowflakes for the inside of this card as well as my white seed beads the white seed beads have a little iridescent quality to them so I love the contrast of the white and the iridescent inside for this shaker aren't they cool I'll have a link to that Etsy shop that my friend Nia just opened if you want to check out her seed beads and her other awesome shaker elements all right I'm stamping let it snow on some white cardstock and fussy cutting that out I wish there was a die if there is and I don't have it let me know <laughs> All right, so that is getting glued on at the bottom and I'll snip off any that hangs over. And then we just need some more snowflakes. So I'm adding the snowflakes to the roof of the house just like I did with the sprinkles when I made it into a cake. And then I'll stamp some of those snowflakes on a separate piece. There's dies to cut them out. They're so tiny, I wasn't sure I would be able to line them up at all all but I tried it and it worked out great so I'm going to glue those in and around my sentiment they're so precious <laughs> so cute and then some more clay snowflakes just to finish off the bottom of this card it doesn't have a lot of squirrels on it like the other ones but that's okay and then I wanted to add one more of those snowflakes to the window sheet so that it looks like it's going right in the squirrel's mouth and it's always gonna be there. I'm adding the big acorn to the wagon and once I get this panel glued to my card base, then I will add that wagon to the inside of this card. Isn't it cute? I'm loving how it turned out. So there the little squirrel pulling the wagon is on the inside with the jumbo acorn with a bow on top. <laughs> that little bow is from the Build a House Christmas add-on. And I just love how this shaker turned out. And that is all three of my cards that I cased from myself turning them into Christmas cards. I hope you guys enjoyed this episode. I surely did. It was a ton of work but so worth it. When you have an idea, sometimes you just have to power forward <laughs> and get it done. So make sure you leave a comment below. Let me know your favorite card and you'll be entered into the drawing to win a, a mystery pack of Lawn Fawn cards from me, cards that I have made. Everything I have used is listed and linked for you below. If you have any questions, I would love to answer them. And of course, you know I love chit-chatting with you, so feel free to leave a comment. I will be back again very soon to reveal the October stamp set of the month. I can't wait to show you, and I will see you all again very soon. Happy stamping. Bye.